This is a waste of time. You ever hear anyone say that? That's what I thought while I was taking insectology. No, that, that's the wrong word. Um, bug Science 101, you know, entomology, that's what it's called. I had to look it up, okay? No, no. Entomology was a waste of my time. I mean, not necessarily a waste of everyone's time. There are people who are really into bugs, but I literally just needed one more science credit, and there was only one science course that was just a one credit course, and it was entomology. I didn't take it because I was interested in bugs. There was no hope that I was going to remember anything I learned beyond being able to pass that test. I mean, like I said, I literally did have to look up the word entomology because I couldn't remember what it was, okay? Like, just doesn't interest me. So let me tell you, I get this farmer. Why am I wasting my resources on something that isn't worth anything to me? Pull it up, get rid of it, get it out of here. Plant some good black raspberries in its place, make me happy. In our world, lives are often measured by whether we're producing something of value or not, aren't they? I mean, unless you're like the wealthy landowner and able to oversee production, um, if you're anyone else who's working below him, you're working to prove your worth every day. And if you have one season where you don't produce figs, well, you'll be out on the street faster than you can say Bruno. And even if you are the la wealthy landowner, you're still measured by what you produce, maybe less the physical stuff, but how fast do we see superstars and politicians and CEOs get kicked down when they aren't producing what their people want? As children, we're given some leeway, though. And let me admit, but let me admit this. If you had seen me wrestle as a kid, you would have thought, now there is a waste of time on the mat. <laughs> I started wrestling in third grade. At the time, it was just something fun to do, and no one cared if you won or lost. Well, by the time I got to sixth grade, you'd think either you know, you're doing well or, or it's kind of time to start figuring things out, right? And it was clear I had no talent. I was a tall fig tree ready to be chopped down every match. And all through sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, this lumbering tree was knocked over so fast that all I could do was count lights most of the matches. Or I think of my nephew playing basketball. He doesn't really care how the sport works. He's just out there to have fun. And, and I mean, to the point that, I mean, like, it annoys his teammates to no end because he's really not paying attention to the game. He's just enjoying himself. So he might be on the wrong side of the court. He might not even know that someone's passing him the ball. He is just wanting to chat and talk and lost in whatever he's doing. My nephew and I, we're, we were both a waste of space on the mat and on the court. But if I had stopped playing in middle school, well, if I had stopped playing in middle school, whoever would have made that suggestion to me to say, hey, it's time to give it up, they would have been right at the time. I mean, look, you've been wrestling for three years, and you counted more lights than the, amount, the total amount of points that you've scored in this time. Why are you still wrestling? Go find something you're good at. But then I got to high school, and my body started figuring out how not to be a tree chopped down all the time. And I turned out to be pretty good at wrestling. I mean, who knows what's going to happen with my nephew. Maybe he'll be great. Maybe he won't. But if he wants to play and doesn't mind the reality that right now he's sitting on the bench a lot until he figures out how to play well, who should tell him no? He's only nine after all. Let him play. But what about those of us who are adults now? The world is not as lenient as it was in grade school, is it? What happens when we're a waste of space, a waste of someone's time, a waste of someone's resources, a waste of someone's money. 
If you aren't producing up to par, the world speaks like this farmer. Why should I keep paying for them? They aren't getting the work done that I expect of them. I talked to someone just this week who feels like that's what they're being told at work right now, and they are afraid of what might happen next. But in the story, God is the gardener. God knows who you can be. And even if the world throws you out, of like, out like trash, God will root you out of the garbage bin and find a place where you can grow to your fullest because God knows all of our potentials. If you aren't creating something the, that people will buy, the world sucks your resources dry, but God acts like Oprah Winfrey to everyone. You get some bread, you get some bread, you get some bread, bottle of milk for you, bottle of wine for you. Come on, everyone's a winner here on God's show. If you get pinned to the mat over and over again or miss the basketball all throughout grade school, everyone else is going to tell you that you should quit. But God is the coach who keeps working with you until you know how to pin the other person. God is the coach who discovered one of my friends, one of my friends who in high school had no clue how to play basketball. And I mean no clue how to play basketball. The only thing she knew how to do was block a shot, and she only knew how to do that because she was tall. You just stand there, right? Put your hand the way of the other person. That's not so hard. Everything else, she didn't know a thing else about how to play basketball. And she got through high school. Her team, her junior and senior year, won five games total combined between the two years, okay? Like, her team wasn't good, she wasn't good, and then she got to college and a coach noticed her and taught her how to play the sport, and within two years, she was playing for Iowa State. That's what God's like. God's the one who notices all of our potential and roots it out and nurtures it. If you work in this world, so much of it tries to take all of our delight and joy out of us. It wants to work us until we're exhausted and weighed down with depression. But God is the one who supplies us joy and delight, refreshment on our exhausted day, hope in our sadness. As I told someone recently when they apologized for ghosting me and they said they did it because they had a depressive episode, and I responded back to them, I said, you know, depression is nothing to be ashamed of especially today, just let me be the person who gives you a smile, okay? And I think that's how God's economy works. Wherever you're at, God's saying, just let me be the person who gives you a smile today. Because God's economy doesn't measure where you're out now. God's economy measures where God knows you can be. God's economy doesn't measure what you can make, but what God can give it doesn't measure how you fall short, but how high God can take you. It doesn't, measure, doesn't work like our economy, but it abundantly supplies that which is good and delightful, that which satisfies our inmost being to all people. God's economy, it does not wait until you can pay, okay? It doesn't wait until you all make an offering before you can come up to this table. That is not in God's economy. God's economy says, everyone, come. Come up here and receive God's grace. It is free to you. You see, that's what the cross is really all about. It's Jesus being the gardener, standing between this world and us and saying, not today, world. I've got too much love and hope for this one to let you throw them out. Not today, world. This one's mine, and I will give it everything it needs. Not today, world. I'm pouring myself into this one, into this one, into this one. And even if it costs me everything, it is worth it. I will care for these people, all of them, until they bloom with eternal life. And so if you think, even for a moment, that it feels like your life is a waste in any way right now, or if anyone ever tells you you aren't worthy, or that you don't have enough, if you ever feel like you don't measure up, let me tell you this. Jesus poured out his whole life 
because he knows something the world can't even imagine. That all of you are valuable beyond measure. And it is worth giving up everything to save you. Amen.